guys, this is Lee here. And if you just started sailing, this video is gonna be specifically for you. I'm gonna review two things that are really important for new sailors. And I'm gonna review one of those things at my home club at Wet Pants Sailing Association. And then the second thing, I'm gonna review a jibe with a capsize. And what went wrong and how to avoid it. Now, the first thing I'm going to review at my home club, Wet Pants Sailing Association, is how to launch a small sailboat like a sunfish in the prevailing winds, which in Sayville are basically a southwest wind. When I first personally started sailing at Wet Pants, I was really intimidated. I never really sailed in tight quarters with a bulkhead on one side and pylons on another, and I wasn't really confident in my skills because I was only soloing my sunfish for basically two or three times. And I was never encountered these obstacles and I really didn't know and I wasn't confident if I can get out there without hitting that bulkhead. But after a while, you start to watch people, how they do it. You start to talk to people, you make a few mistakes. But after you do it several times, that narrow canal over time can get really wide enough to basically maneuver your boat in any which way you need to. I'd like to thank Matt Fleming from Connecticut, who's wrote me and he sent me a whole bunch of stickers that he's made and he sells them in his Etsy shop called Start With A Scribble. He has things like these sunfish stickers, which have all different patterns. He also has lasers, Hobie Cats, Hobie 16s, even a keelboat like a J24 and an Opti. Uh, he also has non-sailboats and I think he can make custom stuff like uh, this kayak. If you're interested in getting any of these stickers from Matt, I'll leave a description down below. I'm not gonna get any compensation from Matt. I'm just trying to help him out. So if you place an order, please let him know that you found him on my channel. And now to the video. Which is the prevailing winds here at Southwest. And as you want to launch, you want to actually probably go halfway between this pylon and this corner. So you want to be launching out here. When the, wind, when the water's light, you can launch out here. The reason why you want to go deep is because when you put the board in, you can only put it halfway down and you're going to slide to the left. It's coming from the southwest, which is prevailing. You could start right here and then aim for that corner as much as you can attack right here right here but you generally don't want to be starting in the middle to the left here because you're going to be pushed into that bulkhead and that's not fun right he's sliding to the left because his dagger his dagger board's not down now he's putting down his dagger board it's kind of low tide he just sails out there and then he'll eventually turn and then when we turn i'll say ready about And now for the second thing I'm going to review in this video is the jibe and accidental capsize. Now let's look through the video and let's see what happened. So I saw this video a few days ago and I just had to review it because this is going to be a great learning experience for anyone who's been in this situation who jibed or who is learning how to jibe. And there's certain things that you could do and anticipate in order to not capsize. So let's take a look at it right now. Okay, the, so the video is about 26 seconds long. However, by the time she started to jibe, until she jibed and capsized, it was only three seconds. So a jibe is a lot faster maneuver than a tack, because a tack, you turn your boat through the wind, and a jibe, you turn your boat away from the wind. So when you jibe, your sail does not luff. It actually catches wind, and then when it fills on the other side, the boom snaps across, it hits you in the head half the times, and that's why they call it a boom. But what you have to do, the number one thing to prevent the capsize and the jibe is to anticipate that your boat is going to jibe. That alone is going to save you a lot of heartache and a lot of issues. Now, what do you have to anticipate when you are going to jibe? Let's break down what happened in this video. The first thing I noticed is that she's sitting kind of center line in the boat and she's kind of in, I would say, a close reach. 
A close reach means your boom is kind of close to the center line. And then you have a real broad reach where your boom is, is like 90 degrees from the boat. But her sail was like this. When you go and jibe, the sail goes from one end, so there's a broad reach, to another. It has all this time to, to travel. But when you're going close, you can anticipate it goes from here to here. So that's much less time and much less travel. That's where she was at. She was thinking that she's going to jive in this video. She started to duck. So she knew she was going to jive. So she's getting ready. She's ducking. Then she's turning away from the wind. So when you're starting to jive, your, your boat will turn away from the wind and the sail is going to be full on one side and eventually it's going to catch on the other. So at the very first second, you could see her ducking. The, the boom is moving across. And then within two seconds, you could see the wind fill in on the other side. And this is where the boat starts to capsize. Is she anticipated? She didn't do the proper maneuver to keep the boat flat. So by the third second, you could see the boom snap over. The wind fills the sail. And when the wind fills the sail, and this is what you have to anticipate, and then there's a period at about two seconds in this video where the sail kind of like loses a little bit of the wind because it's starting to fill on the other side. When the boom is pointing into the wind, that's when there's least pressure on the boom. And when there's least pressure, that's actually when some people will actually take the, the main sheet or the lines or the boom itself and then transfer it over to control the jive. And then when it's on the other side, it's very important to start to shift most of your body weight on the other side, unless you are doing some sort of roll jive and you really understand when you could flatten that boat. But for a beginner, when that boom is coming across, you should be starting to go over right away. She didn't start to transfer her weight to the other side of the boat and then you could see the boat at three seconds start to tip over and the sail filled up. So now the sail is loaded. The lured side of the rail, the, the side that the sail and the boom is on is now already in the water. She's trying to lean her upper body over and that's not enough because she's pretty small to counteract the forces of the wind on that sail. So what you'd want to do is when that boom is moving over, you want to start shifting more weight to the other side. But mostly her core and her sit bones is still in the center line of the boat. And that's, that's not enough, basically sitting on the middle of a seesaw. And it's not enough to counteract the weight of the, of the uh, other person. Before it even gets to four seconds, her, she's in the water. I'm gonna list a few things that can cause a jibe and a capsize, and let's see if they're in this video. One of the first things is the boom getting caught on something. It could be the dagger board that's up, it could be your head, or it could be your life jacket, it could be the main sheet drooping down. So let's see if any of these are in there. Okay, it brushes the top of her hat, but that's not going to cause her to stop the, the boom from going across. Doesn't get caught on the dagger board. She has a cleaving system on her boot. Okay, I see. So at three seconds, some people have mentioned that, did you cleat the main sheet? And Geraldine replied that she did not cleat the main sheet. What she did do is she had tension at three seconds on that main sheet. So when the boom came over and it flipped over and it filled on the wind on the other side, she was sitting in the middle and she, she was already tilting. So that reaction was to grab onto something. And the only thing she really had to grab on was the tiller with her right hand and the main sheet with her left hand. And as she was going over, the main sheet had tension on it, which actually made her capsize more. So to prevent this capsize, the best two things that she could have done is anticipate one and then two as the boom was coming over shift her weight to the other side of the boat the higher side of the boat get her sit bones her butt over to the, the to the side that's going to be opposite of that sail and then actually ease off that main sheet a couple of feet maybe even three or four feet just let it 
don't let it go, but you could basically let your arm straight straighten because that'll give more play and more distance for that boom to go. Right now she was actually, her arm is a little bit bent, but you could see the tension in her main sheet at three seconds. And so what that did, she was already sliding off the boat and the sail was already full. It was a done deal. If she would have acted maybe a split half second before and got her weight over and eased the main sheet, she would have been fine. It would have been no capsize and she wouldn't have to like swim away from the snakes in that bay. Yeah, I read somewhere there are snakes in that bay. Let's see her boat set up and let's, let's see if there's anything that she could have done to prevent it. The first thing I'm looking for is that if she has main sheet hangers and she does at least have two, maybe three main sheet hangers. So she gets a plus for that because if you don't have a main sheet hanger, there's a good chance that that main sheet's going to capture her hat, it's gonna fly off, it's gonna hit her neck or her her life jacket. So that's good. She, I think she does have a cleat on her, on her main sheet block, but I don't think it was cleated, so that's fine too. The interesting thing that I did notice here is that at about one and a half seconds, she actually, when the, when the sail was moving across and then the boom points into the wind, which actually takes the pressure off, she did give it a little tug of the main sheet maybe about two or three inches, and that helps the boom come over. So that's actually the proper technique. The biggest thing is the weight shift over to the other side, and then the easing of the main sheet. Now, when you ease the main sheet, you're spilling the air, and when you spill the air from the sail, you're actually leveling the boat. This goes for upwind and downwind. So when in doubt, let it out. That's what she could have done a little bit better and to prevent this capsize. But her boat setup is, is fine and there's nothing wrong with the boat to prevent the capsize. It was just a timing error. She, she's learning how to jive. Geraldine did another great thing is that she just slid off the boat and went back on it and went sailing again. She didn't panic. It's very important not to panic. Even if the sailboat sails away from you for several feet, most of the time you'll be able to catch up with it because the sail's gonna be into the water. It doesn't really go anywhere and it's very rare that the sailboat will really sail far away from you. Thanks, Gerilyn, for posting this video. It's a really good video to be learning from. Everyone's been in this situation. If you don't get wet, you don't capsize, you don't fall off your boat, you're not sailing enough because on a sunfish, it's made to capsize, it's a wet boat, so you're gonna get wet. So this is just par for the course. So thanks a lot, Gerilyn. And I hope you learned something. If you like this content, please smash that like button. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you would do in, in Geraldine's situation to help prevent anything. Have you seen anything that I missed? Leave a comment down below. I really appreciate it. Hey, we got Melina and Carter. And I had the pleasure to take two children who have never sailed before. And I got to take them on my sunfish for their very first sailboat ride. How are you guys having fun? Yeah. All right, so this is your first time on a sailboat? Yeah. All right, that's good. And we're at Wet Pants Sailing Association. They actually raced today. I took them on uh, four races, but it doesn't really matter about the place. And we just had, you guys had fun, right? Yeah. I had fun taking these guys. So Carter, what did we finish? We finished first. We finished first in one race. And then with Melina, I think. We finished second in second. And we're going to just cruise around now, bring them back. And uh, smash that like button. <laughs> so at Wet Pants, we have sunfish racing. So it's a lot of fun to go sailing, cruising, or even racing on the water. If you have the opportunity to take out someone new on a sailboat, please go ahead and do so if you're confident enough. It's always good to practice safety first. Everyone should be wearing a PFD and watch that weather. Moderately light winds are probably the best time to take out new sailors and end the sale a little bit shorter when their happiness is at all time high. They're gonna have a good time and they're gonna to wanna to come back for more. So if you like this content, you'd probably like this video right here. So please don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell and I'll see you on the water.